Hello, today for review I've got finally arrived long-awaited FIO M11 Plus Limited Edition. I think everyone will easily agree that 2020 was a hard year, but let's face the truth, 2021 isn't much better. Virus is still here and on top of that we have a big issues with supply of electronic components. We are uh, the big shortage of uh, chipsets, uh, GPUs and even digital to analog converters. After that fire on the Asahi Kasei plant uh, is also in shortage and many manufacturers have to uh, change their models to release them on the new digital to analog converter chip. Luckily, few had uh, some stocks of AK4497 and they managed to upgrade their uh, best-selling model M11 Pro without uh, big issues. So in the M11 Plus still used 4497 as a digital tonal converter and uh, that uh, THX AAA amplifier that recommended it uh, that recommended itself as a good solution. But, of course, uh, uh, M11 and M11 Pro were great players at the moment of introduction, but about two years, or how much, I'm not good at counting time, about two years passed since then, and what was good uh, at that time is still okay now, but uh, not great, so few decided to upgrade many aspects of this player. And the main change here is the introduction of new chipset. Now it's built with Snapdragon 660, has 4GB of RAM and it means better performance. And they improved many many aspects. Screen is a bit bigger, Bluetooth now supports, uh, Bluetooth now has 5.0 version, Wi-Fi became faster, uh, Quick Charge version 4 is supported here. Uh, what else? They changed AAC codec added to the Bluetooth, both transmission and receiving. And one of the most important changes uh, is uh, upgrade to the Android version 10. And it's a pretty big deal, uh, because now it also supports uh, few music. Oh, sorry, Apple Music, of course. Few music it supports too, but it supports Apple Music. I recently... Uh, shared my opinion about AirPods Pro Max and Apple Music. So for me as a long uh, inhabitant of Apple ecosystem it's also a huge plus. Price is uh, in some sources it's $750, in others it's $800, so let's say it's $800 or below. And uh, actually it's still uh, upper of mid segment by nowadays scale. And uh, let's have a closer look what we've got in this box. So, package is nice, stylish, good combination of glossy and uh, uh, matte uh, surfaces. No technical specifications, basically. But let's go inside. Here is the main box. And some form player itself let's put it aside for a while this tool to change the micro SDs inside and big set of different papers quick start guide warranties and so on not that interesting here. And in this box coaxial adapter and uh, USB type C cable, pretty big one. So let's put everything aside. And here is the player itself, so it has a protective screen applied from factory and also finally Fio returned back the most important accessory, now it comes with leather case.
So as you can see in terms of package, uh, presentation and finally accessory set, everything is great now. Speaking about the design, first let's do some size comparisons. Despite of uh, having similar shape to regular M11, new M11 Plus is a bit uh, bigger, it's a bit thicker, bit wider and longer, so few millimeters in almost every aspect and also it's a bit heavier and also there is a limited edition version even more limited made of stainless steel which is even heavier and uh, it can be compared in terms of size with M15 so it's really close to M15 in terms of size of course growing bigger is not a great thing but in exchange we're getting a better battery and uh, many internal improvements so probably a worse change few changed design a little bit now you can see that uh, buttons are hexagonal and uh, it looks uh, pretty unusual and fresh bigger part of player is made of aluminium back panel actually is absolutely great it looks incredibly stylish and uh, it gets her fingerprints of course but uh, uh, video doesn't show the full uh, beauty of this uh, angled back panel in real life it looks even more impressive on uh, the left on the left side side here is on off uh, button with indicate with LED indicator around it showing the resolution and other stuff also this is multifunctional button you can select in the menu what it will be doing and the uh, signature volume uh, regulator Fiat decided to make uh, it really unusual this time it's uh, sensors uh, but at the same time it's clickable so you can just click up and down buttons like regular buttons or click and hold or you can swipe it actually it's sensitive and it makes uh, quite clicking sounds to give you audible feedback and so actually it uh, feels uh, pretty good and uh, swipe doesn't change volume much so you can no not afraid of uh, randomly changing volume too much and if you want to be absolutely secure in this aspect you can change additional settings of this uh, volume regulator i will show them later in the menu and on the right side here is the playback control buttons previous track play pause and next one and the hardware hold button so if you toggle it uh, screen will be locked and volume won't be changing so if you decided to do a smart thing and the micro SD card slot. Just one card supported here, but uh, it's common nowadays. Nothing on top side, and on the bottom here is regular out, uh, also it's uh, SPDIF out and line out, uh, and balanced uh, headphones output, and actually uh, Pentacon adapter can be used as a balanced line out, so if you want to use some balanced amplifier with Pentacon to double RCA or double XLR cables, you can do that. And uh, USB Type C, it can be used for charging, to use it as a transport, for USB on the go, to access internal flash cards, as uh, digital to analog converter, so all that modern features it supports. Player works pretty nice as digital to analog converter with uh, low delays. And uh, speaking about the charge, one full battery charge will give you about uh, 11 hours or more in the, from the single-ended output and uh, more than 10 hours from the balanced out. Pretty good figures and uh, slight improvement over M11 Pro, so M11 Plus is even a bit more professional than Pro. And as usual, front panel is almost uh, bezel-less occupied by the screen screen has a good resolution pretty nice viewing angles it's uh, 720p but uh, still nice with a good uh, amount of brightness even for a bright sun it responds well to touches so in all aspects a pretty decent screen 
To summarize this part, in terms of design, in terms of controls, player is also looks, feels and works really good. In terms of firmware, it's Android 10 with uh, Google Play Store out of the box, really good addition and with uh, some tweaks uh, that uh, feel implemented. So in this upper drawer we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mode selection. So mode selection you can see that Android Pure Music it's uh, basically the same as Android but without instead of launcher you will get just the few music player. AirPlay, USB digital to analog converter mode and Bluetooth receiving mode. So we select uh, some of these modes and it uh, toggles. So it initializes Bluetooth for example and uh, waiting for connection. But uh, let's exit this mode for example. So if you remember previous reviews I was sorry that they didn't assemble the, all these features in one place. So they did. So there is one point uh, for convenient selection of the proper mode. You can select headphones output, uh, balanced phone output, all line out, gain, in vehicle mode, settings of this uh, volume uh, control, so you can disable this uh, clicking sounds if you don't like them, it will change quite. You can select slide and hold for auto adjustment, all that items have uh, instructions so if you we, uh, we if we enable this mode we can slide and hold and it will and it will change the volume automatically so we can select auto lock after an activity and in this case we need uh, to double tap it or you can absolutely totally disable this uh, volume touch and it will work just as buttons control Besides that you can enable all to DSD app sampling, it improves uh, travel a little bit but at the same time consuming battery pretty heavily. Also you can select uh, dark theme, night light mode and screen rotation. Actually dark theme can be a bit of new and refreshing experience in the player's world. Of course for smartphone users it's not a new thing but for the players it's a good addition. Uh, additional application it's technical support for the frequency asked questions, firmware update, quick start guide. Also there are some additional uh, options in the settings like uh, separate mo uh, audio settings where you can select different uh, modes, gain and uh, filters. But uh, main staple, main part here is feel music. If you seen it once it didn't uh, uh, change much comparing with other feel players they built on the same uh, uh, code base but at the same time if you haven't seen it I will let's uh, do some quick uh, walk through. If you seen it you can skip forward. So when you start there are three uh, modes playlists local music and DLNA. In the playlists recently played, most played and recently added. Uh, also you can uh, select uh, different playlists here. On top it shows uh, some recently played tracks and you can search for it. In the local music you can browse by uh, all tracks, by artists, uh, by albums, by genres and by folders. And you can see Browsing by uh, browsing big lists is almost instant, so new processor gives its uh, benefits. As usual, you can select many tracks, delete them, add to playlists. All that stuff is uh, present here, so no worries about that. And in the settings, equalizer. So equalizer is just regular graphics equalizer, and. Uh, uh, Fio link for remote control, Bluetooth device control to control third party device and the theme customization you can select uh, based on album cover, white, black, uh, some additional custom settings and now playing page you can select uh, spectrum. I, I like this option so I will, I will enable it. There are a few different styles but I use default one, I like it. So confirm and let's go back. 
and scan for music, Wi-Fi, music transfer, sleep timer, resume, game plus playback, play through folders, show album art on the lock screen, auto enter now playing after selecting track, auto search for lyrics and album cover, replay gain, USB output, MQA, it supports MQA with 8x unfolding, artist list display, you can select here artist or album artist, File size limit for album art, notification style, language, reset database, exit and about. So as you can see a lot of options to tweak and to select what suits you more. And now playing screen is also familiar. Here is the spectrum analyzer, big album cover, navigation and additional buttons like add to favorites, playlists and all other stuff. Basically firmware is really stable here, Fio already polished this code base. Of course they had to spend some efforts adapting it to the new chipset, but player itself and firmware in general works pretty well and uh, Bluetooth speed is pretty good and uh, sleep mode is implemented nicely. Also uh, Wi-Fi transfer is okay, so all that aspect is good and player works as a modern, fast, reliable device. And of course about the sound, probably the most important question. I think that almost everyone will agree that uh, original M11 Pro was already really good sounding, it was a model worth that segment it was targeted to. And, but uh, of course everyone was uh, expecting some improvement uh, from M11 Plus, uh, from this limited edition, and uh, few didn't disappoint here, they managed to improve sound, they added a bit of additional dynamics, they improved uh, treble, and uh, that overall gives a new sense of uh, more natural, more mature sound. But let's probably talk about it uh, step by step. So let's have some earphones on the table. I will use Andromeda 2012 uh, as an example. And uh, it's just an example, I used many other headphones and earphones for testing. But uh, Andromeda looks fine on this table. So bass is deep, uh, it goes almost to maximum depth, it's controlled well. It has a bit uh, forward dynamics, it, it's impactful, it, it highlights that uh, punchiness, so it sounds really pleasant when it comes to some kicks, when it comes to some drum, when it comes to some fast uh, synthesized bass, and it sounds uh, really realistic, even with a bit of highlighted sense of realism with acoustic instruments, with all that wooden and brass instruments with low uh, notes on the fortepiano with organs, so with all that stuff that requires good uh, texturing and uh, natural sounding. So very balanced and controlling low frequencies uh, really well. And that gives you a sense of uh, presence, but at the same time it's not highlighting bass, it's not the model that tries to sound warmer, that tries to add additional weight, so it highlight, uh, actually highlights probably not the correct word here, it's adding a bit of dynamics, but not adding weight at the same time, so everything sounds realistic, uh, but uh, not too bloated or too accented. But if you prefer warmer type of representation, it's not uh, the best choice, because it just plays bass as it is, a bit highlighting that uh, realistic aspect. And uh, first example, actually right about uh, that impacts, kicks and other stuff that I've mentioned, it's Ghost, Mummy Dust, uh, on that album they have interesting highlight, uh, interesting big drum and uh, th this player delivers this drum kicks in a really impressive way with that sense of massive big uh, thing uh, doing kicks. And uh, another example, it's basically synthesized low frequencies, but well recorded and well mastered, it's Yellow Wishes Games. 
electronic music, but actually the type of music that is not accented on the huge bass, but at the same time low frequencies play a vital role here, so good performance of lows required here, and this player delivers it with absolutely perfect control. Mid frequencies are natural with a slight uh, shift towards a bit musical side, but with a good resolution, but uh, not uh, focused on the micro contrast. Resolution is good, but it's not highlighting that small nuances and delivers them in a natural way. A bit uh, boosting dynamics, but not, the, not highlighting the emotions and uh, not trying to add weight uh, to the notes. Uh, it's probably the most noticeable change from M11 Pro. M11 Pro was uh, trying to add a bit of weight. This one doesn't do that, but at the same time renders notes and instruments in a more realistic way. Difference isn't huge, but uh, still noticeable. Vocals have a m a more velvety sound and uh, more sense of presence here. Especially for male vocals, they became more crisp and uh, more engaging. And uh, upper mids rendered uh, nicely with a good amount of forwardness. But of course it's not trying to highlight them or to boost, it's a matter of uh, earphones. Imaginary stage is uh, noticeably above average both in width and in depth, but it's absolutely as it records. It's not trying to move vocal forward to improve depth, it's not trying to uh, boost stage in width, so just as it is and as big as earphones allows. And uh, first example of the mid frequencies. It's Hans Zimmer, Lion King, so it's a live concert in Prague, really like this uh, record. And uh, starting with the uh, first notes of this uh, tune, with that uh, vocal part at the beginning, it just moves you to that uh, concert hall, giving you sense of presence. Of course, not absolute, but uh, pretty realistic. And. Uh, Second example for the mid frequencies is Marvin Gaye, right on, great instrumental part and of course absolutely astonishing vocals and uh, M11 Plus delivers them in a really impressive and emotional way with good balance uh, between emotions and naturalness and uh, resolution and technical stuff. Uh, so. Uh, player is pretty critical for the quality of records because it's not trying to highlight something or to hide, but at the same time it's not super focused on the micro contrast, it's not that uh, absolutely clinical monitoring type of representation, so it, it won't uh, give you that, uh, but still it requires good records to show the full potential. And uh, treble, probably another noticeable improvement here. It sounds a bit more extended with a bit, bit better layering, uh, not uh, on par with uh, flagships, but uh, step forward comparing with M11 Pro. And that improved layering gives you more that uh, tiny decays, nuances and overtones. Really a good balanced treble, not too sharp, but at the same time not uh, too hidden, so basically amount and energy put in the treble region is just as it is. And that gives you good sense of realism and this player goes uh, really close to flagship tire in terms of treble layering. Maybe sometimes it's on par with many players of uh, 1000 plus dollars range. And uh, as, an, as a first example for the Travel, it's Hiromi Uehara, 1149 pm, just good uh, fortepiano music uh, and uh, it requires good treble performance uh, to sound realistic and uh, this uh, player plays it part nicely, it's not a problem for it. And uh, second example, famous instrumental track by Pink Floyd, Marooned, a great sense of realism, uh, that uh, uh, sense of Im immersion into this track, into the atmosphere, into the emotions, and of course nice uh, treble plays a, a, an important role here. About the Lord, 
uh, player is absolutely universal, it's not super powerful, single-ended output delivers about 200 milliwatts for 32 ohms load, and uh, balanced, uh, if I remember right, it's uh, 5 uh, plus 100, so basically 4.3 volts RMS from balanced out. M15 has that uh, boosted mode in, in this player, uh, it's not present, but it's enough for vast majority of the load. It's not uh, probably the best choice for tough to drive planar headphones, but uh, big lion's share of full-size cans and absolutely all uh, in-ear monitors, maybe with few exceptions that I don't know, but uh, vast majority of earphones it will drive properly and it, it's, uh, it has a really good black background, uh, so with sensitive in-ear monitors it delivers a good sound without uh, background noise. And uh, actually there is not big difference between the single-ended and balanced output. On the balanced output you get more power and of course if headphones require more power they will sound better. But in general with sensitive in-ear monitors not much sense in plugging them into balance. Balanced out, maybe stage is a bit wider, but uh, difference isn't big, so it's uh, really listenable and enjoyable from single-ended output uh, too. And a few words about the compressions. I did some A-B tests with a few models. I won't uh, tell about the models that I didn't test with it, because uh, comparing players require uh, spending some time. So, uh, comparing with M11 Pro, it's uh, probably the most obvious compression. It sounds more natural with a bit more organic uh, mids and with better more defined treble, especially in terms of layering. So it's not a big difference, but it gives a noticeable um, improvement overall in terms of uh, matureness major, of sound. And also, of course, it improved in the technical aspects, I mean chipset and other stuff, so I think it's a pretty worse update. FIO M15 is a bit more powerful and it's more weighty in terms of representation, it's more highlighting weight of notes, it's a bit more impactful on the bass, and a bit uh, actually not worse, but less energetic on treble, so this one is putting a bit more energy in the treble area. And uh, actually, you know, they are pretty close in terms of sound, but M15 is for those who need more weight or for those who need more power. This one is for those who need less weighty representation and who want more prominent uh, treble. Uh, what else we've got in this uh, range? What I did compressions. So, Hybe R6 uh, 2020. 2020 is a bit more linear and actually a bit more focused on the micro contrast, a bit more natural for those who prefer more monitoring sound. And it's also a pretty technical player in terms of chipset and other stuff, so basically their foundation is really close. Unfortunately, I didn't test M6 2021 yet. And uh, regular uh, uh, Shenling M6 Pro was uh, more weighty with uh, darker and warmer sound. Ibasso DX300, uh, I did compressions out of curiosity, and you know, they have a pretty similar signature and tonality, but DX300 of course uh, offering better control and uh, uh, sounds more mature in terms of rendering and representation. So it was FIO M11 Plus, you know, I think uh, the same way as it happened with regular M11, this player set the new mark when uh, other manufacturers simply have to follow that. So uh, not much sense in creating something with Android 7, so uh, users will wait Android 9 or Android 10, faster chipset, uh, better screens and so on. And of course everyone will be waiting for the new FIO M17 and other releases by this company. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a nice day.